worrying about things that could go wrong and staying in that space undermines my ability to solve it, to be present, and it robs me of my full thinking capacity. If you catch yourself chronically worrying, it means you have a habit, and it will very much lead to anxiety. There is a direct correlation between your habit of worrying and then that becoming anxiety. So worry is a baby. Anxiety is the big sister because anxiety just means that the bad thoughts are now manifesting as physical symptoms in your body. Your stomach hurts, your throat is tight, you're sweating, your heart races. And a panic attack is when your mind gets concerned because your body state is agitated. So it takes over and gets you out of whatever situation you're in. And so you want to go to war against your habit of worry. Use your worries as a quick signal that there's something to fix or pay attention to. But do not, under any circumstances, allow yourself to become the kind of person that wastes your precious lifetime sitting there spinning cycles. It's like washing the same load of laundry over and over and over again. It's a total waste of time. And it will erode your happiness and it will make you ineffective at getting the things that you want in your life. Certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment um, mm -hmm. because people are, tend, tend to, a natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self um, I think certainly extremely tenacious uh, and, um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in you know, 80, hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And then, a lot of work. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, right. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. This question is from Froso Marinu on YouTube. When your home life is less than desirable, it's not where you want to be living, but you're trying to break out, how do you not let the chaos around you affect your vision and drive? So this is a framing question. So what you want to do, and this, this Tony Robbins asked this question, I think it's absolutely brilliant. How is the worst thing that ever happened to me the best thing? that ever happened to me. So in your circumstance, how is being in a chaotic home life the best thing ever? Now I'll give you one example off the top of my head, and this is exactly why I play first person shooters. Can you learn to stay calm in the chaos? Because my friend, I have the chills. If you can do that, it will serve you so well in every single area of your life, in a relationship, in business, if you want to be an athlete, if you want to play games, like whatever it is that you do, one of the things that you're going to have to become great at is letting all of the noise drift away into nothing and getting into laser focus on the thing that you're working on. Now, when I give advice like that to people, they think, well, how do I practice? The amazing news is the best thing that has ever happened to you is that you have a built-in way to do that. Your home life is mass chaos. So now you get a chance to practice. I have the chills. You get a chance to practice every day, tuning out the chaos and getting laser focused on something. That's framing. Now there are other ways, but that one is so powerful that I'll, I will end it there. Focus on that. It is practice, practice every day. Thank God you're living in this chaotic environment. Man, congratulations. Psychologists have been, not all psychologists obviously, but the psychological profession is, is neck deep in this, in this pathology, has been beating the self-esteem drum for 50 years. Oh no, you're okay, you should feel good about yourself. Like, you're, you're fine the way you are. It's like you think, well, that's a calming message for people. It's like, no, it's not. It's not at all. And I, I watch my audiences, it's like, it's full of people in the audience who think, 
I'm suffering a lot more than I think is tenable. A whole bunch of it's my fault. My life is not in the order it should be. I know I'm doing 50 things wrong. It's like, what the hell's wrong with me? What's wrong with the people around me? This is really serious. And some, you know, well-meaning person comes up and says, you know, you're okay just the way you are. It's like, no one wants that message. It's like, no, I'm not okay the way I am. I'm not okay at all the way I am. I know that. And so, you know, when I'm, when I'm speaking to, to, when I'm speaking now, I say to people, well, no, you're nowhere near what you could be. That's the, that's the positive message. It's like, yeah, you're a mess, but you don't have to stay that way. If you're a mess, you know it, obviously, you're suffering away like, like so much you can barely tolerate it. It's like, that's okay. You could do something about it. And so that's gonna... the thing that, that turns the lights on. It's like, you yeah. could do something about it. It's like, oh. I had a, like six months ago, I had a airplane crash. Really? Yeah. Like and, a private plane or is this Yeah. A... And uh, everybody in that island, like, um, we were the only survivors from all the airplane crashes that had happened over there. Wow. Where was this? That was in Bahamas. Bahamas. Yeah, Bahamas. Yeah. How many people were on the plane? We were, we were six, and you all survived. Yes, and not <clears> even one scratch. And everybody died. Last, like, you know, when I got out from the plane, you know, the plane was yeah, caught up on fire, and and we all were alive. And I was like, why? So you know, when I started like running to the FBO, I was like, I told them a story. They were like, you're lucky because everybody died. You know, like the last seven airplane crashes that they had there, everybody died. Wow. So there's no, there's no, there's no coincidence. I think life is perfect, man. So I remember that Pharrell Williams called me that day and he was like, listen, there's no, life has no mistakes. Mm. It's perfect. And you're yeah. here because of reason. So he was like, what are the chances to be alive? and more from an airplane crash. So that's when I was like, hmm, okay, so I gotta, I still have something to do in this world. And and I always knew it, but I, I was new, but now I'm like reassured that, you know, the message that I have to send the people is like, you got a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a reason, a reason why, you know, to get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get this. Yeah. This is what I want to. And dreams are beautiful, man, because they keep you, they keep you with hope. And with, when there's hope, there's a future. Mm. And that's, you know, that I think that's the message. You know, music, it's just the way I can get to the people and 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 tell the story. Yeah. You know, like go and follow your dream. Everything is possible. Yeah. You know. And the good thing about dreams is like, there, you know, there's no end. You know, you can dream as long as you want. Yeah. Once you achieve one dream, it's you another bigger another dream. One and another yeah. one and another one. And it doesn't matter how big they are. If they're small, small dreams or big dreams, they're all dreams. And mm. that's what it matters. Kobe Inc. and this venture capital firm are a lot to take on. Are there, are there other things? It seems like kind of each of your vehicles maybe has a specific purpose. Are there other areas and, and things that you're looking at and want to pursue? Well, no. Well, it's pacing, right? Because, you know, we, we have, there's certain things that we want to get to but we have to pace those out because we have to have absolute focus on a few of those things, right? The Brian Steibel Fund and the stories that we are creating, right? I mean, those are our two lenses right now. There are other things that, that are going to come, um, but that's way down the road. You know, we have to have a very, very sharp lens because we can do so many things. I mean, that's the hardest part right. when we first started it is, you know, you have so many people coming from different different angles, different points of view, and you can do this, you can do that, and you know, it's, a lot of them are uh, you know, uh, very lucrative offers, but they're small window right. opportunities. And the hardest part's been pushing those to the side and going for things that have a much, much longer tail, um, which is risky, but you know, what are you gonna do? Right. Just, I think that's the best way to go about it. I think the courage, uh to be really open about those, you know, some of the things I've been through in the past all comes from experiencing those things. And when I was going through, say, you know, when I was going through some of these things, I felt so alone. And a lot of girls or people do, you feel like nobody can understand you because a lot of these problems deal with like isolating yourself and feeling alone. And one of the things that really helped me have the courage to change was that I realized that I'm not alone. Like there's actually people who understand me and there's people who have actually overcome this. And it gave me hope. And so that's why I 
really strive to give a positive message of hope about like, you know, if you if you're not happy with the person you are today, I I 100% believe that you can change, and um, so that's what I like to hopefully share with young girls. And I would say that's what gave me the courage to to share.